Hey guys, it's MJ, the Student Actuary, and in this video, we're going to be looking at the process of becoming an actuary if you're from Spain, and you know, what degree choice you should do, and all of that. And the reason for this video is because of this comment, I told them to study mathematical statistics, but apparently that degree doesn't exist in Spain, and the choice is between mathematics or statistics. So, just to get a little bit of background, I saw that Spain does have an institution for actuaries, I don't think it's as well developed as all the other ones. Um, I also came across this comment which said that the salaries and the sophistication of actuarial science in Spain is quite low. So if you are in Spain, I would consider maybe joining the Actuarial Association of Europe or going with the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries. Uh, this is the one based in the UK. Um, or going with one of these mutually recognized agreements. So either the one in Europe, just because you're in Spain, Spain's in Europe, um, Australia, India, South Africa, Canada, America, Japan, and Israel. Those are all like the top actuarial associations. So you definitely want to align yourself with one of them. But coming to the question is, there wasn't an actuarial science degree in Spain. So the choice is between this bachelor degree in mathematics and this bachelor degree in statistics. And I'm just going to go through their curriculums and then make a choice. What is nice about this bachelor's degree in mathematics is that you can see that it says you'll be able to pursue a career in business or industry or in banking and finance, consulting, health or services. So that's definitely a plus on the actuarial side. For the first semester, I like that you're doing computer science, the fundamentals of mathematics, algebra, calculus, you know, that's all stuff that actuaries will need to know. Um, the geometry, that's not that much. Differential calculus, it's a small bit of actuarial science. Discrete maths and you know numerical lin linear algebra, they play a small role in actuarial science, but I don't know if you have to focus too much on that. Um, same with these ones. Mathematical programming, that does stand out for me, which I think is a really good thing. Uh, physics and topology, I don't think we did that. So that's going a little bit onto something else. Um, Probability theory, that's very important, although it's, it's a pity that such a small part is, is defined to it. Uh, mathematical models in physics, I don't really think you need to know too much there. But I do see that in the mathematical course, they have included statistics as one of their, their topics. Um, it's in the seventh and eighth semester where things do actually get a little bit more interesting. Bayesian methods is very, very important. Um, what else is very, very important over there? Uh, time series analysis is important, but you're going to be seeing that by going the mathematical route, you're going to be learning a lot of mathematics that isn't necessarily applied to actuarial science in the traditional sense. So you'll be learning a lot of additional things that you might not be applying to the actuarial side, but you will be doing, I mean, the financial mathematics is very important. Um, you don't need to know the history of mathematics to become an actuary. Um, what else do they have here? Uh, queuing theory and simulations. So, I mean, you might be able to apply these things in actuarial science, but overall, you're getting a lot, you're doing a lot more math uh, mathematics than is required. Having said that, under the professional opportunities for this degree, you know, there is banking, finance, and insurance, risk analysis, which is very much actuarial. And the fact is, if you've got a good grasp of mathematics, you can understand cryptography, which I do think is a, you know, a booming industry. So I would say this is actually a good degree to do if you want to study actuarial science. However, I actually prefer the bachelor degree in statistics. And the reason for this is that if we look at the courses, is they're a lot more attuned to the actuarial science syllabus. Um, you know, so you do need to do a little bit of business administration, you've got the calculus, you've got your probability, you've got your statistical uh, inference. You know, these are all very important things. So is your principle of economics. I love that they've got programming in there. Linear algebra also, you do need to know just a little bit of that. Um, integer linear programming, great. Multivariable calculus, I remember doing that. I remember doing that, but I haven't really applied that in actuarial science, you know, directly, but I did mathematics pure for two years, and then mathematical statistics is what I majored in along with actuarial science. Probability and stochastic processes, that's very important. Uh, statistical software, that's a really cool thing to learn as well. Um, so yeah, I, I, you can see third course, Bayesian methods. So there is a lot of overlap. Remember, we saw Bayesian methods in the other one as well. Um, but I'm just feeling like this one is 
a lot more focus on the actuarial science mathematics that you need. Uh, demography, it's always good to do a course in that. Um, medical statistics, if you want to go into like health insurance and all of that. Again, you've got your time series analysis, uh, you're doing your data mining, you've got your statistical methods for finance and insurance. So overall, I really, really prefer this course over the, the pure mathematical one. Also, if you see the third bullet point, it says economics and finance, actuarial science, insurance, banking, risk assessment, and lending, stock markets, management of securities, portfolios, financial analysis, market research, competitor analysis, and pricing policy. So that is, that's actually great. So I would, I would do that one, and then I would go and do a master's on top of that, that focuses in actuarial science. Um, because remember, it's very important that you realize that there's two ways to becoming, or there's two things that you need to become an actuary. You need your degree, and then you need to go and join one of the professions, which I introduced in the beginning of this video, and that's what you need. So you need to do your degree, which I've already done now, and now what I'm doing is I'm busy writing the additional exams to get into the profession. And once you've got those two things done, that's when you become I'm an actuary. There's a few other things, but in a broad base, those are the two things you need. But anyway, thanks so much for watching, and if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Thanks, guys. Cheers.